Savior's precious birth, life, atonement in the Garden of Gethsemane, the suffering on the cross, his burial in Joseph's tomb, and his glorious resurrection all became a renewed reality for us. The Savior's resurrection assures all of us that someday we too will follow Him and experience our own resurrection. What peace, what comfort this great gift is, which comes through the loving grace of Jesus Christ, the Savior and Redeemer of all mankind. There is no greater expression of love than the heroic atonement performed by the Son of God. As a result of Adam's transgression, mortals were separated from God, and we would be forever unless a way was found to break the bands of death. This would not be easy, for it required the vicarious sacrifice of one who was sinless and who could therefore take upon himself the sins of all mankind. Thankfully, Jesus Christ courageously fulfilled this ancient, this in ancient Jerusalem. There, in the quiet isolation of the Garden of Gethsemane, he knelt among the gnarled olive trees, and in some incredible way that none of us can fully comprehend, the Savior took upon himself the sins of the world. Even though his life was pure and free of sin, he paid the ultimate penalty for sin, yours, mine, and everyone who has ever lived. His mental, emotional, and spiritual anguish were so great they caused him to bleed from every pore. And yet Jesus suffered willingly so that we might all have the opportunity to be washed clean through our faith in him, repentance of our sins, being baptized by proper priesthood authority, and through receiving the purifying gift of the Holy Ghost by confirmation, and by accepting all other essential ordinances. Without the atonement of the Lord, none of these blessings would be available to us, and we could not become worthy and prepared to return and dwell in the presence of God. The Savior later endured the agony of inquisition, cruel beatings, and death by crucifixion on the cross at Calvary. Recently, there has been a great deal of commentary about this, none of which has made it clear the singular point that no one had the power to take the Savior's life from him. He gave it as a ransom for all. As the Son of God, he had the power to alter the situation. Yet the scriptures clearly state that he yielded himself to scourging, humiliation, suffering, and finally crucifixion because of his great love towards the children of men. The atonement of Jesus Christ was an indispensable part of our Heavenly Father's plan for his Son's earthly mission and for our salvation. How grateful we should be that our Heavenly Father did not intercede, but rather withheld his fatherly instinct to rescue his beloved Son because of his eternal love for you and for me. He allowed Jesus to complete his foreordained mission to become our Redeemer. The gift of resurrection and immortality is given freely through the loving grace of Jesus Christ to all people of all ages, regardless of their good or evil acts, and to those who choose to love the Lord and who show their love and faith in Him by keeping His commandments and qualifying for the full blessings of the Atonement, He offers the additional promise of exaltation and eternal life, which is the blessing of living in the presence of God and His beloved Son forever. Jesus Christ, the Savior and Redeemer of all mankind, is not dead. He lives. The resurrected Son of God lives. That is my testimony, and He guides the affairs of His Church today. In the spring of 1820, a pillar of light 
illuminated a grove of trees in upstate New York. Our Heavenly Father and His beloved Son appeared to the prophet Joseph Smith. This experience began the restoration of powerful doctrinal truths that had been lost for centuries. Among those truths that had been dimmed by the darkness of apostasy was the stirring reality that we are all the spirit sons and daughters of a loving God who is our Father. We are part of His family. He is not a father in some allegorical or poetic sense. He is literally the father of our spirits. He cares for each one of us. Though this world has a way of diminishing and demeaning men and women, the reality is we are of royal divine lineage. In that unprecedented appearance of the Father and the Son in the sacred grove, the very first word spoken by the Father of us all was the personal name of Joseph. Such is our Father's personal relationship with each of us. He knows our names and yearns for us to become worthy to return and live with Him. Through the prophet Joseph Smith came the restoration of the gospel. The Lord Jesus Christ has once again revealed through His chosen prophet the ordinances and the priesthood authority to administer them for the salvation of all who will believe. Brothers and sisters, I believe that if we could truly understand the Atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ, we would realize how precious is one son or daughter of God. I believe our Heavenly Father's everlasting purpose for His children is generally achieved by the small and simple things we do for one another. At the heart of the English word atonement is the word one. If all mankind understood this, there would never be anyone with whom we would not be concerned, regardless of age, race, gender, religion, or social or economic standing. We would strive to emulate the Savior, and we would never be unkind, indifferent, disrespectful, or insensitive to others. If we truly understood the Atonement and the eternal value of each soul, we would seek out the wayward boy and girl and every other wayward child of God. We would help them to know the love Christ has for them. We would do all that we can to help them prepare, to help prepare them to receive the saving ordinances of the gospel. Surely, if the atonement of Christ was foremost in the minds of ward and branch leaders, no new or reactivated member would ever be neglected. Because every soul is so precious, they will counsel together to see that each one is taught the doctrines of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, our Heavenly Father has reached out to us through the atonement of our Savior. He invites all to come unto Christ, who is the Holy One of Israel, and partake of His salvation and the power of His redemption. He has taught us that it is through our faithful adherence to gospel principles, through receiving the saving ordinances that have been restored, through the continual service, and by enduring to the end that we can return to His sacred presence. What possible thing in the whole world is remotely as important as to know this? Fathers, mothers, and missionaries play before very small audiences, yet in the eyes of the Lord there may be only one size of audience that is of lasting importance, and that is just one, each one, you, me, and each one, of the children of God. The irony of the Atonement is that it was infinite and eternal, yet it applies individually one person at a time. We are children of God. Each one of us is precious to the point of bringing the Lord God Almighty to a fullness of joy if we are faithful or to tears if we are not. 
brothers and sisters, never, never underestimate how precious is the one. Remember always the simple admonition of the Lord. If you love me, keep my commandments. Always strive to live worthy of the sacred full blessings of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, may you give to others and receive for yourselves every blessing the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ offers.